Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign. Then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so, Sagittarius, this is a bonus reading for you. And our card tonight is the Four of Discs, which is probably my favorite card. Mostly because I relate it so much to being at home. <laughs> Having a really firm foundation at home, wanting to be in your own environment, okay? Working hard to create a life where that can happen, where you can be close to your base, right? And so I'm happy to see that. That's such a, this is my first reading of the day or evening. <laughs> and um, I'm happy to start that way. So if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do, especially if you're new to the channel. And if you'd like to hit the like button, I would not be mad at you. Not in the least. Okay. So the first thing I really kind of saw that that stuck out to me here is that we have a chicken. Okay, we have a hen. You can see right here, here's the head. Let's do it up close. Here's the head, the eye, the body, right? Here's the tail, okay? <laughs> and it looks like she's eating. We have these coins or these little uh, pieces of food, whatever it is. So I do feel there is a real strong feminine energy here. Uh, this might be like mom energy. This might be like grandma energy. Uh, this might just be, you know, um, well, it, like empress, empress energy. And so I am looking at this and I'm feeling like, yeah, this is kind of like that, that whole, I'll make it happen. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's going to happen right? I don't know where we're going to figure all the, how we're going to figure all this out, where all the things are going to come from, but we're going to make it happen, right? Now, if you grew up with like a single mom, for instance, um, or, you know, maybe there were generally just financial struggles, right? Maybe dad was gone working all the time. Mom was working a lot of the time. Um, you know, whatever it was, there would be things that come up, right? In childhood, um, maybe you're on like a, a, some kind of team, you're playing, um, I don't know, first they thought of hockey or football. Those are two I know are very expensive. <laughs> if you are, um, if you have kids involved, these are things that, you know, it costs a lot of money to do all of the, the aspects of these particular um, sports. So just as and now, maybe you didn't play sports, but this is an example. So you have a, you have a single parent, you have a, you know, parents who are struggling, who isn't right anymore. Um, it seems like the world, all of us strapped for cash, right? Um, but here's the thing. Um, you grew up feeling like, yeah, you were, you were fine. Things were always kind of provided where, um, you really needed them. And that's because there's this mother energy of we're going to do what we have to do, uh, to make sure 
that you are able to be involved in all the things that you need to be, that you want to be, uh, within reason, right? Um, that, you know, there's always food on your plate for meals and that you have a, a, a roof over your head, you know, whatever that looked like. But this is like, yes. I'm going to make sure that you have what you need. I'm going to, you know, work three jobs if I have to. I'm going to hustle a little bit if I have to. You know, I'm going to take on all the gigs and odd jobs that it, I have to to make sure that you have what you need. And so, uh, yeah, I feel that you have a lot of respect, especially for mom, grandma, uh, auntie, Sis, older sister, whoever it was, and you've taken on uh, the same kind of energy in your own life, and that is that you take care of business. You do what you got to do. Nothing's going to get in your way, right? Maybe yourself. <laughs> Sometimes we get in our own dang way, right? Um, but no. Nobody is going to stop you from doing what you have to do. And, you know, this real kind of scrappy, um, uh, knowing, um, you know, just very motivated. And here's the big thing, realistic. Okay. Sagittarius people, you work so hard. You do what you, I mean, you do more than most of us, I would say. You take care of a lot of people. That's the big thing I see with a lot of Sagittarius, uh, you know, clients and, and people I know in general, right? You tend to be in a role of minding others, taking care of, um, being somebody of great service. Um, but, you know, I definitely believe that you also uh, are very conscious of the financials, right? You, you know, you have to make money. You got to pay your bills. You know, you're, I, I feel like maybe you're somewhat like us Virgos in that, and I'm a solar Virgo. That's why I say that, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, I'd rather um, you know, work myself to the bone and get my things evened out, worked out, everything paid as much as I can, right? Um, then just kind of toil in apathy and let it build up to the point where I don't know what to do. I can't live under that kind of anxiety. I just can't. <laughs> I, I just, you know. Um, so... I feel like you're a lot the same. You know, you don't stop moving. You are getting things done. And so I, you know, I think this is one of the big things that kind of really stands out about you is that you are, you're a hard worker. Uh, you're a smart worker. You are good at figuring out how to kind of make it all come together so that you can get it all done. You're good at kind of scheduling is a big thing. Um, but there is, I think, and I think this is important because it also feeds into your ability to be grateful because I don't think that you like were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Not at all. You've had to work for everything you have, everything you've been able to provide for your kids, grandkids, family, you know, uh, immediate community, um, and so you respect, you respect it, okay? And, um, and there is, there's a lot of gratitude there, which, you know, I feel like isn't, not, not, not a um, popular posture to be in, right? I feel like more and more, um, we all have to kind of come back to a place of, of being more gracious, being more grateful, being really conscious of our blessings, right? I never understood this idea of like counting your blessings, not until I got older, 
right? Not until I became the adult in my life and had to, you know, provide for myself, which has been a lot of years now. Um, and it took me a while to figure it out, but, um, you know, you, you do hopefully anyways, you get to a point where you, you realize like how much work it takes to get, keep everything running in your life. And you look around at people who, uh, maybe when you were a kid, you grew up around them, you didn't understand why are you always gone or why are you saying no to the things I want All my friends have it or, you know, um, making your kids kind of, or well, you being kind of pushed into, uh, starting to work at a little bit of a younger age, maybe, you know, 15, 16 years old. And, um, you know, while that's happening, you might think, well, that's not fair. I don't understand why I have to do this because, right. It's important for us to, to come to the realization that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Technically. <laughs> so, um, yes, I just, overall, I think that you're probably, um, pretty good, pretty good with your finances, really good at figuring out how to make money, really, really good at doing the work that it takes. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're going to kind of turn this and it looks like we have the head of a snake. Okay, the mouth is open. You can see the eye up here. And so I want to keep I want to keep that in mind. We also have a cat. Look at that cat. You can see the ear, the ear, the eyes, the nose. Um, we'll keep going. I want to see more about maybe what's going on with that snake. Okay, so we have a person who, it looks like they're kind of, here's the body, here's the head. It looks like they're kind of bent over, like looking at these people. Now we also have, and you can see there's a person here, there's a person here, and um, it is, to me it's like I'm, I'm looking, I'm investigating, right? Um, down here, it looks like we have kind of a grouping of people with an angel. Okay. So I almost feel like we, we have that snake right on this side. Okay. Uh, we also have the cat, which we'll come back to the cat. Let's do the snake and the, and these people and the investigating. So I do feel like there is a person, at least one person, right? Kind of lingering on the outskirts of your life, really taking an interest in what you're doing. I don't feel like this is something that is welcomed. Okay. I feel like this is somebody who is intruding. This is somebody who, um, you know, maybe you know them, you're kind of, you know, acquaintances, you feel like, you know, like you want to say hi to them or, you know, at least you should say hi to them when you see them. Um, you know, just kind of not somebody you think about too much or ever really just, you know, you see them at the, um, coffee shop every morning or you, if your kids, they're involved in some kind of activity, you go and you see them you say, Hey, what's up? What's going on? How are you doing? You know, and that's the end of it. And, um, or maybe you work. This could be somebody that you don't work with directly, but they're kind of around, you know, maybe they work in a different, you know, department or office or, um, floor or whatever it is. Uh, so I do, I feel like there's just, they're very drawn to you, but I don't, I don't know. It feels like there's something there's something about them that is really off putting. And, you know, I think it's just, it's, it's a mismatch energetically is the big thing, but I feel like th here's the deal is that I feel like this is somebody who oversteps. This is somebody who, 
maybe like you know comes to like it's like they're they come to the situation and they quickly feel comfortable um and they feel almost kind of entitled to maybe even just asking you um questions that you don't want to talk you, you just feel uncomfortable like i don't know you dude i don't you know this is why are you asking me about like my personal life <laughs> you know um they're like on uh maybe social media adding you and it's kind of like what is going on i don't even know this person like i'm not comfortable um inviting them into my personal life and because they're really they are kind of pressing you a little bit and um and what does that mean if you don't know what that means it's just really kind of being um you know forcing interactions basically maybe even kind of you know trying to uh date you or like get to know you and you're just i'm not interested not interested not interested not getting the hint right uh, and so I do with that snake energy, I just feel like there is this kind of intuition of be careful of this person, um, because they feel almost, it feels volatile, right? This feels like a person who, um, you know, I don't know, maybe like they didn't hear no enough growing up, right? Nobody like told them, Hey, not cool, man. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta slow down with that. That's not how we treat people, you know. Um, not a lot of sense of uh, respecting your privacy, your boundaries. And now maybe you haven't really said it explicitly, but you know you've been um, pretty. I don't know, you know, like avoid, it should be clear. Now, there could be a lot of reasons why they're not picking up on, you know, you not being interested or, um, you know, whatever it is, whatever, however you're trying to put that out there, your own energy, putting up the wall, um, you know, uh, your body language, you, uh, your avoidance of them, um, whatever it is. So I do feel like this is a situation and I don't want to be like an alarmist about this, but, um, you know, I, you know, I'm a woman, I've grown up as a woman. So, um, yeah, I am highly, um, highly conscious of interactions with people and um and i also have trauma so that's another layer of it i may be a little more vigilant than s other people but you know i think it's important make sure that you're telling somebody about this person make sure if they are sending you messages if they get aggressive whatever document it okay tell hr go to you know don't mess around with that kind of thing Go to HR. Um, you know, if it's in your private life, yeah. Like I said, making sure that people know what's going on. Even if it nothing has gotten weird yet, right? And I don't I don't ever want to be the person that's like condemning somebody with no, you know, there's no um whatever, uh, they haven't made any kind of, um, action that really, uh, but listen, we know, we know about people. We have to learn to listen to ourselves, even if we're wrong, it doesn't matter. Now I'm not saying go, you know, uh, blast this person and, and, and call them out and all that. That's not what I mean. I just mean be safe. Keep your eyes out. Um, you know, like I said, document. Make sure people know. Um, so, you know, you just feel kind of uncomfortable or whatever. Um, just because we don't know what people will do. And that's the sad truth about life. You know? And it's always been that way. It's not more that way than it ever has. It's always been that way. Okay? 
Um, I don't feel like anything happening, but really it's, I'm not seeing anything bad happening. That's not what, but I feel, it's like I can feel the anxiety that you have about, I don't just, you know, it's almost, it could even, I'm almost wondering if it's like a, well, I, I wonder like if you have a partner and they have an ex, you know, maybe it's like something like that where they're kind of aggressive. You happen to know them socially or you live in the same area or whatever it is. It just feels not, it's not good, right? So listen to yourself, okay? Um, and don't let anybody tell you you're overreacting, okay? Uh, because you know how you feel, absolutely. Okay, so let's see. We also have the cat. We have the people here. Let me just say also that when I saw the people here, I saw the person kind of investigating. The person investigating is the person really kind of like just up in your business, right? They And this is the person we've been talking about. Like I said, it's like the person from work um, that you barely know, right? They go on like Facebook and like pictures of yours from like eight years ago, right? And it's like, what the heck is going on? How did you get that far back? <laughs> um, that kind of vibe, right? We've all had something like that happen where you, you're perplexed, right? Um, so that's that. Now with the people down here, it does. It feels like a calling to, yeah, let people know. It, it doesn't have to be some big thing, but yeah, let them know. I, this has happened. I don't really like it. Um, I feel weird about this person. They might not be a bad person. They might be fine. They might actually be a cool friend, uh, later on. But right now, because I don't know them, this feels weird. Okay. Um, now the cat, where did you go? Cat. There we go. So to me, and then down here, we also have a person right here. Okay, so to me, this energy kind of really gets you into this more independent, not really hanging out with anybody, um, just doing your own thing. You know, and like, I, it could be that you work with these people, you or this person, maybe it's like, you know, everybody gets together on a certain night to go have you know, appetizers together or whatever. Um, and you don't want to go anymore because you just are really avoiding having to talk to this person or be around them. You really don't want to be left alone with them. You know, if something arises and you're like, I don't want to be around them. Um, so I do, I feel like there's just this mode of like, I'm just going to be focused on a different part of my life. I'm, you know, I'm leaving like, and it doesn't have to be at work, but this is also, like I said, an example, you get done with work, you get your stuff, you're out of there, right? You're not lingering, talking, or, um, you know, deciding if you're going to go, you know, have, um, uh, you know, a drink or something with your, with your coworkers. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I don't think this is necessarily a terrible thing for you. I don't think that you lament it too much. Um, just the fact that, you know, it kind of sucks when somebody feels so familiar and you're not like, you don't have the same energy for them. Um, you know, it, it can, if you're an anxious person, you know, like I am, um, it really can become something that, you know, really takes a lot of real estate in your mind. Um, so I do, I feel you getting like deeper into this kind of, uh, you know, your own zone. Um, you know, and it might be that you, yeah, you have a family at home and stuff and it's just, you're not really too interested in what's going on in these kind of social, um, spaces, right? You're just, you know, I'd rather just go home and be with my family do my thing. I don't want to think about all that. I want to put it away as soon as I'm done there. And, um, and I think that's really the vibe, 
you know. Um, now, we also have the person over here. It also, it looks like two children with them. And uh, I kind of almost feel like there's a situation here where, oh, and it's three kids. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Yesterday, I have to just, I have to do a little ramble. I'm sorry. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I saw a mom who I've seen before, um, you know, and something, one of the, one of the local family things or one of the classes we go to or whatever. Um, but I saw a mom, um, at the place, it was like a kid's, kid uh, centric place that I went to yesterday with my daughter and my husband and niece and stuff. And, um, there was a mom coming in. She had five kids. They were all, you know, ranging from like, I don't know, maybe like eight and, and below, um, at least three, I think about probably three that were under five. What a, what a warrior. Let me just say, I just, I, I was stressed about my one kid, right? My one four-year-old, she was on a play date. So she was having fun, but you know, she was getting, um, you know, a little bit, uh, four-year-old teenager, right? And, um, I was just, I went to the bath, I went over to the bathroom, I was walking that way by myself, I was like, ah, oh, I get a moment, and, um, yeah, I saw this mom, and I just, it stuck with me, you know, because she was, she was doing all the things, and honestly, God bless her, what, what a strong being, I just, <laughs> So I'm looking at this and it's the same energy. I, it reminds me of just, yeah, you know, seeing, seeing mom, seeing dad, seeing grandparents, caretakers out there in the world. Yeah. Navigating all these children and so, you know, doing it solo. My goodness. Um, now every Sagittarius mom I know which I know a few, oddly, like a lot of Sagittarius people um, I ha, that I can think of that I know, they're all like mom, like ever moms, right? They've raised their kids. They, well, they probably helped raise their siblings, right? Raise their own kids, um, you know, maybe raised or helped raise some grandkids, other people who came into the family, um, you know, uh, you're like your son, daughter brings home somebody who's gonna, they end up getting married, but they're young, right? And you end up kind of taking care of them and, and, um, having like a new daughter, son in the family and, you know, and so on. So you kind of a collector of people, right? And, um, and I do, I think your life is full of this youthful energy. And even though I feel like, yeah, you're depleted from it sometimes, it is also the thing that really keeps you going. It keeps you young, right? It keeps you up in the mix of things. And, um, you know, even if you are very tired, I think you really enjoy your family so much. That is maybe biological family, also definitely chosen family. Okay. Now we also have the letter or the letter E up here. Let's see. Letter E. We also have the number one, eight, 18. Okay. Um, now let's see, what else do we have? We have a bird. We have another bird. We have somebody skiing. So I wonder if there uh, is somebody who transitioned in your life who was really into skiing. And I feel like this is like somebody that was into that like golden era of like, at least in America, right? Um, I would say during like the 60s, 70s when skiing was super fashionable and, and now it's like real, you know, it, I think it's like more serious and people who are really into skiing that like they, 
go out of their way way to travel and and go to the best slopes and that kind of thing well i grew up in uh northern california and i for a brief couple of years lived up near south lake tahoe so if you know anything about the sierra nevadas and in that area there's a lot of good skiing so i grew up a, around people who are really into skiing um but i would say in that era of the 60s 70s there was such a culture of you know all kinds of people who are into skiing that was like a big big thing and um so i look at this and i feel like it's almost like maybe a grandparent or maybe one of your parents or a family member very into to the skiing life and um and maybe you even learn to ski with them um but i do i feel like for some reason they're coming through and they're they're making sure that i say that so you know like you're like oh yeah that's that's uncle eddie or you know whoever <laughs> that's my auntie <laughs> um and i'm trying to i'm just trying to see like what are they showing me it just, I keep thinking it's like a lot of laughing and smiling and like almost this kind of like lighten up, you know, I, I don't know. And they're not doing it in like, it's not a, like a rude way, but like, it's kind of like a joking, like, don't be so serious all the time. You know, like life can be fun. Don't forget that. Um, and yes, I just, I don't know. I must, I just keep imagining um, you know, like maybe like the eighties, early seven or late seventies, eighties, early nineties, possibly, but being, uh, you know, being a younger person during that era. Right. And yes, being just being around people who are having a good time, laughing, enjoying, um, now did they fully have their lives together? I don't know, but they, it seems like, you know, almost can you think kind of how you think of somebody who would be kind of worldly, maybe lives, you know, um, kind of all over the place. They're traveling for work, they're doing well, but they spend a lot of leisurely time. And, um, yes, I, I, the laugh is the big thing. So I think skiing and having a very, um recognizable laugh yeah <laughs> so uh let's see let's do our self-care affirmation cards and i'm just going to go ahead and flip through stop where it feels right it says guardian at the gate i uphold my boundaries my time energy and space are treasures that i protect I care for myself and say no when I need to. I am the guardian of my life energy. Yes, this is absolutely the vibe of, uh, you know, this person that is lingering about. Just don't feel any type of way about saying no. About, you know, um, making sure that you... Yeah, go really honor your intuitions, your instincts. You know, sometimes there's just people that we meet that we are immediately, I don't like that person's vibe, you know. Um, my husband, shout out to Dove and Serpent Tarot over there. He's like, he tries to be like the ever- um, optimist <laughs> about people, you know, I don't think, I think he's more like me where I meet somebody, if they make me feel weird or uncomfortable or it, just the slightest thing, not, uh, -uh. <laughs> don't like the vibe, not, not partaking, um, you know, and I think he's more like that than he lets on <laughs> just a little, just a little secret about Paul, <laughs> but he does. He's very much, he tries to give people more of a chance, definitely. And, um, yeah, there have been times where I'm like, I feel like something is weird about that person. Like, not good weird. Like, sketchy. 
I don't feel safe with, you know, whatever, talking to them, being near them, alone with them, what, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, he'll try to tell me, well, I don't know. I, I didn't get that feeling from them. And then guess what? We find out something or they do something or whatever. And, um, and I am, I'm reminded. Yeah. Listen to your intuition always. Okay. Um, I don't, it does not matter if anybody understands you, you understand you. Okay. If your husband doesn't understand you, if your parents don't understand you, if you know, your kids or whoever it is, listen to your intuition. Okay. Period. <laughs> oh, I need a drink there. <laughs> We've had so much smoke here. Um, I don't know where you're at, my dear, dear listener. Um, but my goodness, we are getting a lot of smoke from, um, Canada, which I've been praying for their, about their fires and things. It just, um, if it's awful, it seems like it's been a lot in the last few years of the wildfires. So, um, yeah, I just, I was starting to feel really good. My, I got my allergies under control after a wild spring. Um, haven't been, knock on wood, haven't been sick <laughs> in a few months, couple months at least. And now it's just, we're inundated with the fires. And, um, and yeah, so unfortunately having to stay inside a lot, and I'm sure a lot of people are going through that, um, you know, for different weather events and fires and things like that. So, um, you know, hopefully you haven't been affected by, um, any of those things, but anyhow, I want to tell you Sagittarius, I love you and I thank you for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next reading is coming out. It is free to subscribe and if you want to leave a comment, oh, yes, 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 please do. <laughs> I read them all. And um, if you're new to the channel, definitely shout it out. All right. All right. All right. Sagittarius, I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in a few days. Good night. <laughs>